Uh, so welcome to the Share Chair. We have uh, Isaac Thornson Jr. Yep. And Anya Hokuth Jr. It's show week. Yeah. Right. For you, Isaac. Which plays are both of you in, and then what roles do you guys have? I'm Lawson Yonkers, and I'm Bella. And then okay. I'm in Brighton Beach Memoirs, and I'm Eugene. How prominent are the roles? Like, I don't want to be like, do you have a small role? But are they, um, do you guys have a lot of lines? In my or? show, pretty much, since it's such a small cast, everyone's a big role. Like, I don't really okay. think mm-hmm. there's, I think the two boys are, like, the leads, but then everyone else is just, like, a lead as well, I think, because mm-hmm. yeah. it's just such a small cast. Yeah. Well, basically, in my show, you know, it's, it's my memoirs, Eugene's memoirs, so yeah. I'm Eugene basically narrating slash acting throughout all of this. Um, when is uh, Lost in Yonkers? Lost in Yonkers is November 5th, 6th, and 7th. Cool. Nice. I'll let 7 know. There's a matinee, though, or something, isn't there? I think so. Okay. <laughs> I have to double check. <laughs> look at the posters, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Just look at the posters. Yeah, <laughs> what is it, the, ba- like the basics of your... Can you just explain what your show is about? Okay, so basically, um, Eugene, my character, is... You know, your average boy going through puberty, but um, it's his memoirs. So it's just, it's just life. You know, he looks up to his older brother a lot. Um, for Who's advice, that played by Joe Nagin, play is playing Stanley, my older brother, and then um, kind of gets he kind of gets into trouble. Stanley does, and then. Eugene and Stanley, you know, fight, you know, yeah. like brothers do, you know, it's just, it's just life, and, um, he's kind of, as- he aspires to be a writer mm-hmm. when he grows up, and they're all kind of banking on him to go to college and be successful one day. It's I'm a comedy, yeah. To laugh. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. And how about Lost in Yonkers? Um, Lost in Yonkers is about two teenage boys, and their dad loses their job, so they have to stay with their German grandma for 10 months and she's like super mean and then along with her is that you no no (laughs) along with her they is Aunt Bella and that's me and um so it's just kind of about like those 10 months and um like what they go through during during the time do you like connect to him as a as a theater person getting into why you love Mm -hmm. theater so much like just yeah. So like, what is Eugene like, like me personally as a to yeah, him as, as like your a role? own character. Like, well, I kind of just like like Eugene is fifteen. I'm sixteen, so I can kind of relate oh. to a few things, you know, that he experiences. Um, of course, you know, he's he's always kind of getting getting into trouble, mm-hmm. and I'll be on stage doing something, and then Mr. Doring would be like, "Stop being Eugene," you know, <laughs> so. It's kind, of, it's kind of fun in that, in what, that aspect. What is one of those? What's an example of that? Well, when does he Eugene get on is maybe like a little bit more like hormonal, you could say. You mm-hmm. know, kind of lusts after his cousin a little bit, which is part of the comedy. Oh. You know, it's he's trying to figure like out kind of what's okay and what's not okay. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. So. What time period is this in? 1930s, 1937, actually. So it's right before World War II. His dad, Jack, who's played by Kurt Recker, is Mm -hmm. really, you know, like, involved. Not involved, necessarily, but keeping up to date in that time period about it because they're Jewish. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. Does that have a, does the being Jewish have a, um, like, an even bigger part of the play, or? Well, the accents is part of it. You know, Uh it's kind of... Kind of funny. Why do you love theater? Because both of you are really prominent yeah. in the theater community here and went to Stratford and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Like, from growing up until now, like, what draws you to it? What started you into it? My family, like, for as long as I can remember, someone's been in a show. Like, I think mm-hmm. before I was one, my mom had been in, like, five. And <laughs> so just, like, growing up with a family, that, and my dad, too. Like, everyone's been in shows and... Mm-hmm. We all like musicals and stuff, so just you kind of grow up with that, and then that's just what I like to do too. So being like we've all been in theater for such yeah. a long time together, so like we're all really close. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's when we're in two different shows though, and you don't see each other as much. It's so sad. Like then when yeah. I see when I see Kurt down the hallway, I'm like, Kurt, I miss you, <laughs> and like because we just get so close, and yeah. that's like when the seniors leave. Why everyone's just so sad. Mm. 
kind of adding on to what she said about that, you know, like um, me and Ian kind of started out like my first, my very, very first show. It was I was Tweedledee and he was Tweedledum. So um, right from there, you know, me and Ian were kind of always auditioning for the same shows. It was just it was just summer theater, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't really branch off that much, but mm-hmm. that's really what got me into theater and stuff. We've all kind of grown from that and become better actors through that. And now, you know, in high school, I think it's really, really what hooked me. You uh, are doing it when you're performing. When you're actually before before we even maybe talk about performance. When you're rehearsing, how do you build? Characters like what's it? What's a process? You know, for a, a high school actor or actress. Uh, Doring does a really good job of teaching us how to get into the character. We'll do like our characters walks and just by like, and then he'll have us say a line and then just like really look into the line and think like, what does your character really mean here? Like, what would your character think? So then, just like the rehearsals, once you kind of start thinking that over and over again, then you like know your character as well as you know yourself. So. Yeah, Mr. Drawing's really good at making sure that we aren't um, repeating ourselves when mm-hmm. we're acting. Because sometimes you'll play one role in another show, and then you'll play another role in a different show, and it'll be completely different, mm-hmm. but you'll act the same. Yeah. So he's, he's really good at breaking those habits. Yeah. So Mr. Doring's the director. Yes. And yep. he's been the director the last few years. Yep. And what are, what are, so that's one of the strengths. What's, what are some other strengths of Mr. Doring? He's just, excited. Yeah. He gets us really excited about things. He's very professional, mm-hmm. which some people might not love, but I really, really like that mm-hmm. part of him because he takes it seriously, you know? Mm-hmm. So it kind of almost weeds out the people who aren't going to, take it as seriously as they should if you miss something he'll point it out you know and it's it's just really really great to have someone with how how long has he been acting like for like i don't even know know. a a lifetime right yeah he's really really he knows what he's doing yeah and also he like each audition you can't go into an audition thinking oh i'm gonna get the part because i got a good part last year it's like Uh your audition has to be good and he's not gonna favorite anyone it's mm-hmm. like um he does judge it on how what you brought to the table and like i walk in there and you know i tell him my name and stuff you know he already knows me um and then he's like you're reading eugene right and i'm like i was gonna read stan and he's like read eugene and i just you know i read it right there and then he literally right at the end he said you're cute. Like, it was, like, the <laughs> weirdest, like, thing, but it, like, it, at the same time, it, like, felt good, you know? Yeah. Because it was kind of saying, like, like, I looked like I was, you know, a 15-year-old boy talking about his feelings and stuff. So. Yeah, so in regards to what the character was, that was a compliment. Yes. But if it had been, like, yeah. a serious part saying that would have been... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you guys have any favorites who you've played? Like, do you guys love um, any characters that you've played before? I loved being Mrs. Banks. That was, like, I don't know if I could ever replace Mary that. Poppins that was awesome. Mary Poppins. And that was Mary Poppins. Oh, yeah, yes. me yeah, too. Yeah, that was, I don't know, I just, that was just so much fun for me. I love roles that I can kind of be myself a little bit, you know, yeah. where I don't, I don't have to change myself as an actor much, where I can just kind of put myself in that position and empathize with the situation and then just you know be in the moment can you try to describe that feeling of being in the moment and on stage and people are watching and can you try to put words to that experience and what what it is to be performing to be performing for me like i i remember rehearsals so much better than i remember performing because mm-hmm. when i'm performing it's like i don't even remember it like i go there i do it and it's like you are you are that person for that time and there're like people watching you and like i remember sometimes i'll see my mom but it's like so weird cuz i don't really see my mom cuz i'm like not on yet it's just so weird and then <laughs> yeah. when it, when you get off stage then you kind of get nervous and the stuff and then you go back on and it's like totally gone. It's I'm okay. curious about the value 
that theater is for you? I'll look back and just think about like the wonderful friends and like the times that we've had together and we I don't know we've just like I've gone to theater feeling so in such a bad mood and like having mm -hmm. had the worst day and you're there for like less than five minutes and all of a sudden you're perfectly fine because like just yeah. being with each other. Traditions and um like so many things that we do together every year that it just it brings everyone super close and then the seniors leave and at the cast party people are crying <laughs> and it's just like it's it's a really unique experience. It's awesome, right, you guys. Come see the show. <laughs> see yeah. the show. Please. Break a leg, you two. It Thank sounds, you. uh, I can't wait to see him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Share Chair. Stay tuned next week for a new episode.